Yeah, so we um, are actually going to an art fair in Knokker. Uh, this is in August. In the summer month, uh, there is uh, sort of not too much to be done normally, but this is a wonderful small fair along the Belgian coast. Uh, and August is always a very busy month. And therefore, we are actually trying to see what we might collect and pack for Knokke for this fair. Behind me uh, is the uh, uh, large Jordaans painting. Jordaans is, of course, you know, one of the most important Flemish painters. Um, there are not too many paintings by Jordaans uh, sort of in the trade at the moment. And this is one of the largest, uh, very rich, beautifully painted, uh, and also the symbolism of Diogenes uh, sort of looking for an honest man, um, I think is an, an excellent idea to bring. At the same time, I'd have to uh, look at, for instance, the quality and the price combination. I might want to take one or two other Flemish landscapes, 17th century, but because we deal in five centuries of paintings, I would like also sh to show people, you know, that we have uh, 19th century French Impressionism, Dutch Romantic School, that we have some wonderful Rembrandt original prints, perhaps uh, one or two Russian social realist painters, a modern Chinese painting. Um, that's the, the idea behind it, so that um, I'm showing uh, not only the quality, but also a price range um, that I feel is adequate, let's say, for, for that particular fair. There are about uh, 30, 35 participants. It is an art and antiques fair. We probably are, let's say, the most important art gallery with paintings. Therefore, people expect something from Daos, and that is why we also need to bring one or two important uh, items. I'm also thinking about uh, Corot, for instance, about Renoir, to give you an idea. I'm actually thinking about uh, a wonderful painting by uh, Kukuk, uh, by Schelfhout, winter scene by Schelfhout. Hopefully, in this uh, very hot summer, people might actually go for a cooling, nice winter scene by Schelfhout. You never know. Um, I also have a few good paintings by, f uh, by, by female painters. There are a few collectors who only go for female painters. One of them is a beautiful um, still life painting by Adriana Hane, a large piece, very colorful. And when you look at that piece, for instance, it is quite amazing that a lady would have painted that particular painting with such force and such sort of vervent colors. Rembrandt, of course, an important name. We have the largest holdings in Holland of original Rembrandt prints. And at the moment, I think we might have about uh, 20 or 22 uh, of these prints. And uh, perhaps I should bring, let's say, four or five and see whether I can make a nice choice of, let's say, a biblical scene, something like a, a landscape, something sort of with mythology in it. Of course, Rembrandt was someone who uh, loved people. He always drew anybody who was walking in the street. So anything that comes close to, uh, let's say, the character of Rembrandt. Um, and of course, if you would like to, um, uh, to shock people at the same time, I think we should actually hang a Chinese modern art painting. We have uh, a lovely painting with faces by an artist who actually painted his own face. Facial structures, let's say, in Chinese art are of course very important because uh, people always felt that that is where uh, your soul let's say, shines. And you will probably um, also see that uh, Chinese people sort of hardly have an expression in their face. They would like to be blank. Uh, this particular painter painted a number of faces with their eyes closed and one with his eyes open. That's himself, that's his own portrait. So in other words, there, again, there is symbolism in that painting. He would like to open eyes. He would like to, he dares actually to, to sort of to show himself with open eyes. Uh, and he wants to break with a certain sort of uh, Chinese, uh, perhaps a sort of a, um, a, a, a sinister secrecy, you could say. Um, then, of course, uh, when you look at Russian paintings, I mean, Russian paintings are very affordable. We talk about, uh, let's say, wonderful French, colorful, vivacious paintings 
especially of people, genre paintings, and for three or four thousand euro, uh, you can buy yourself uh, a great painting. Um, if, on the other hand, you would look for a similar painting in France or in Holland, that same painting would cost perhaps five or ten times the price. So, in other words, Russian painting uh, is still very affordable, and if you look at this um, in, a, in a more realistic sort of commercial light, there are 300 million people sort of, uh, living in Russia, seeing their heritage you know, being shown on the wall, whereas we only have about 20 million people in Holland uh, looking at, let's say, paintings by Dutch Impressionism. Uh, if you look at Israel's, Isaac Israel's great Dutch Impressionist master, we have uh, two or three beautiful examples. Um, but, of course, those prices are completely different from, let's say, similar Russian paintings. So, in other words, I hope that we can come to a nice conclusion and that we can take uh, perhaps roughly about 50 paintings and uh, we would have to see how we hang these paintings in the context uh, of one another and uh, we uh, are only looking forward to doing business and also making new clients because, of course, uh, that is what we live off. I'm the sixth generation in this business and we would like to continue and therefore you'd have to sort of make new clients for the future.